Yo, what is up guys, Surgical Goblin here and welcome to this new episode. In today's video, a new letter episode and as you guys can see, I'm number 114 in the world right now, so not bad at all. I pushed a lot the last couple of days and actually it's near the season and let's see, uh, still 3 days and 21 hours left, so I'll try to finish as high as possible, but I do want to of course make content on it, so I'm sorry that it took a while for uh, like making a letter episode, but hopefully you guys are excited for this one because I will first share 2 replays, I have the replays here ready and then I will do 1 live match at the end of the episode, so Hopefully I'll win that match, that will be really awesome. But I'll actually share uh, this deck, Bridge Bam Triple Spell. We have the Arrow Zap Fireball. So this deck is really good against decks with, of course, the main horde. Arrows get so much value, like, for example, the Giant Three Musketeers deck. Like, this deck uh, is super good against it. And even for some other matchups, like, versus, like, kind of, like, normal decks, I would say. Like, for example, Expo, etc. Like, Golem, we are able to beat them as well, even though we do have triple spells. So here, the first replay will be against this Golem deck with the Flying Machine, Mega Minion, um, kind of cheap Golem deck actually with prince ice spirit and then this one against expo the mega mean gets so much value in this matchup but i will show you guys how i beat it and like kind of my thought process like while playing why i decided why i decided to uh push or maybe like defend etc etc so i think it will be a really nice episode i think you guys can learn from this gameplay so i would say let's just begin with the first match guys so this is the golem one i was talking about with the prince ice spirit guards uh flying machine and mega mayhem and we of course have the bridge man with triple spells arrows fireball zap so in this matchup i can't really use the arrows i don't think i used it at all actually so in the beginning i was just waiting because usually i like to kind of play like on his um like make a decision on his play for example if he invests like six elixir in the elixir collector i would like to punish like i would go uh with like a push like attacking him but in this case he didn't really do anything so i was assuming that he would either had like a heavy deck so i actually decided to go with a bennett in the, uh, in the back and see if he dropped something so he still didn't really drop anything he was holding on to his guard so i actually decided to go with an attack uh thinking that he had like a really um like yeah heavy deck which was actually the case so him dropping the guards i actually decided to go with my dark prince this way the barbarians would actually be able to go to the tower dark prince is still alive the ice spirit didn't even uh freeze any of them so the dark prince unfortunately didn't charge but is still getting a ton of damage with the barbarians bring down the tower to 1147 hp really good start here i dropped my inferno dragon for his mega million the bandit while dashing like into a, a charging prince the first hit the bandit actually doesn't take any damage i think i mentioned this many times in my episodes so here i actually go with a counter uh, attack i decided to drop my ice golem in front but he cycled back to his guard so really well played on his part but it does mean that he doesn't have guards for our battle ram i knew that he most likely had a uh, flying machine so as you guys can see soon i will have my fire ready this deck is actually also quite popular on later so i will go with my uh, battle ram as you guys can see i'm holding the fireball there you go there's the flying machine i see the firing machine and i throw my fireball to it battle ram unfortunately doesn't charge he does drop again his ice spirit but again it doesn't freeze my uh, barbarians so it actually takes down the tower so the first tower is down we have one minute and 20 seconds left and i knew that he has golem like this deck as i said it's quite popular on leather so i knew that we're about to like go into double elixir and in double elixir of course the heavy deck is better so right now defense is like super key and i will actually be um quite risky later on i will show you guys that soon so as you can see he has the golem ready he does have a little bit of an elixir advantage he's already uh like at nine elixir while we were just at six i believe or seven but i do still decide to go with better ram i'll go with ice golem in front better ram to tank and then i will go with a fireball for his flying machine unfortunately i don't hit his guards here as you guys can see they come like a little bit later but the guards do go like one of the guards go down and actually like the other two guards go in front so this will be a little bit risky guys and i will pass it soon um not yet let's see so i have i have my inferno dragon here and here i drop my ice golem so what i was trying to do is like his support units trying to not let him like build up a unit uh, like a push um by kind of guiding his units away so i drop my ice golem there thinking that they would walk into the other lane but of course the tower is down like the right side tower is down so it actually went to the left side tower so that was kind of tricky he did use a zap but of course the zap doesn't kill the inferno dragon it does reset it like um the golem will be able to get some damage of course so i will uh, continue the episode or i will continue the replay i mean so the ice golem dies like to the prince and um the mega minion so here i decided to drop my better ram but i was like really afraid because i was like allowing him to build up a push as you guys can see he still has a prince he still has a mega minion and he will actually go with his golem but only 15 seconds left so i knew that i was able to hold off like the golem wouldn't be able to take down the tower i still dropped my inferno dragon just in case but the most important is distracting his units we still have a bandit there as you guys can see maybe you don't see it but it's under the uh, inferno dragon then i went with my better ram to tank for his prince and luckily we were able to defend it so at the end it was able like we 
we uh, it did pay off. I mean, to Kaitis units. At first, I was kind of like afraid that we were uh, like allowing him to like stack up units like the Prince, the Mega Man, etc. And then maybe if his Golem was tanky for it, we wouldn't be able to uh, defend, but we we're still able to defend. So I think that was a really nice replay. And then the second replay against Expo. So as I said, Mega Man gets a ton of value in this matchup. We don't really have anything to take down the Mega Man except for a six elixir like the Fireball Zap or the four elixir on the Inferno Dragon. But usually I like to keep the Inferno Dragon or at least try to take down the Expo with the Inferno Dragon. So I would say let's just begin with the replay guys. So his starting hand is uh, Tornado, Mega Man, Ice Wizard and Skeletons. And of course I don't know what he has. We have Ice Golem, Arrows, Batteram and Inferno Dragon. So I believe I would just... Um, I will just wait. So he shows skeletons, and skeletons could be either Expo Cycle, could be 2.6 Hawk Rider, or this Expo deck. Expo is actually doing really good, like this uh, specific version. So him showing the Mega Minion shows, or like kind of, um, yeah, proofs, or yeah, shows as I said, that he has Expo. So we actually go with the Inferno Dragon into the um, Mega Minion, and here he uses his Ice Golem, and Ice Golem is usually really good at guiding units like a Dark Prince, like a Bandit. So here I actually decide to attack in the other lane, knowing that his and his Mega Minion and his ice column is out of cycle which is basically the counter to our push i mean he will kite um, the units like a dark prince with the ice column to the other lane and he can take down the battle ram with a mega man without uh, us being able to do anything unless we spend six elixir with like fireball zapping his mega man so here he showed and his mega man and his ice column so i actually right away decided to push in the other lane i know that i threw all my elixir he actually goes with a defensive rocket but the battle ram has a shield the dark prince has a shield dark prince actually uh dashes into it he goes with his lock he goes with um i believe he drops his skeletons right here i do go with a zap which might be over commit but as you guys can see we are not like down that much elixir and we're able to deal so much uh, damage to his right side i believe over half um the tower goes down like 1760 hp left so here he is up he uh, he is up a little bit like about two elixir we have the ice golem we have the arrows fireball and the inferno dragon so he actually again goes with his uh, ice golem i believe or he goes with his um expo i'm not sure so again he goes with his uh ice golem in the back so i will actually again attack i will go with my ice golem or actually i just drop an ice golem so this is i think this is really key guys and i think many of you guys don't really um do this or i don't really see many players do this but just drop an ice column at the bridge like here he was expecting me to already go with like for example again like a, a better and a dark prince behind it but i just dropped my ice column and i kind of messed up his cycle here because again like his mega main and he used his mega main and he used his ice column so again that will allow us to i believe attack maybe he will pressure with the expo i'm not sure what happens here i think he will go with an expo but still we were able to take down his um or like force him to use his his Mega Man. So he actually pressures us with the Expo, which is really smart on his part. I actually, uh, I, yeah, kind of forced to defend there. I'll go with my Dark Prince. I'll go with Better Ram. Here I actually zapped the Expo and the Ice Wizard. I think if I didn't zap, the Better Ram would have connected. But the Barbarians are actually still able to take down the Expo. I believe the Expo gets a little bit of chip damage, but not much at all. Not much at all. So our tower is still uh, really healthy, like 3.2k. His Ice Golem will get some death damage, but I know that his hand right now, like, I'm trying to keep track of his cycle while playing. So his, as you guys can see, he has Tornado, he has Mega Man, he has uh, Expo and Rocket. Next card, Ice Wizard. So I knew he didn't really have much Elixir or much like an answer, I would say, for this combination. So I know that I don't have much Elixir, but I do still decide to go with Ice Golem Bandit, knowing that he doesn't have much. So as you guys can see, we force him to go with a Tornado, pulling our... Um, Bandit like back, but the bandit will dash into the ice wizard and after that with two hits it will actually take it out Then he also needs to spend a lock and we still do so much damage guys His right side tower is down to 1060 HP here I go with the dark prince and I'll go with the inferno dragon ride it right like uh, really re uh, like aggressive Knowing that he has a mega man So I said like either the inferno dragon can, can take down the mega man or the um, or the fireball zap So here I actually fireball his tower and zap his ice wizard as well But I do know that we spend a lot of elixir and he also knows it So as you guys can see he has his x ball ready he will go with his expo in the left side lane i believe um i actually predicted it with a bandit unfortunately he's really reactive with skeletons so the bandit wasn't able to dash into the expo we do go with the dark prince as well i believe as you guys can see the ice golem was still tanking so the dark prince will take the hits now from the expo inferno dragon actually take down the mega main or not yet there you go the mega main will go down i'll go with the bandit i believe i will zap his skeletons just forcing him to defend the barbarians over there this way he can't really defend the expo so he does go with the Ice Wizard, I believe, on the left side. No, he actually, yeah, he does go with the Ice Wizard on the left side. So the Bandit is dashing into it. The Inferno Dragon is still alive. But look at the right side. He's still forced to defend the Barbarian. So as you guys can see, like, at the Elixir, we do throw arrows. Actually, I did use arrows in this matchup just to cycle and just to deal some damage. I actually predicted his Expo with the Inferno Dragon here. As you guys can see, he's forced to Tornado it away. 
I will go with my Dark Prince again, like better. I'm in the right side to pressure. I believe he will go with his look and then a, a Mega Main or Ice Wizard. Let's see. So he actually goes with Ice Wizard, but let's pause real quick. So me um, going with better in the other lane. Of course, I'm trying to defend the Expo and I was able to defend it, but me dropping the better in the other lane forces him to spend all his elixir there. So as you guys can see, he just has three elixir and he still needs to respond to the um, barbarians. Like he dropped his Ice Wizard, but I, I believe I will zap the Ice Wizard. But we still have a Dark Prince, we have a Bandit, we have an Inferno Dragon on the left side. So I will actually fireball his ice wizard but look at the bandit guys it actually dashed he threw his um Joe's tornado still forced to defend the right side as you guys can see he went with skeletons he went with ice golem and the left side he doesn't have anything for the bandit and the inferno dragon so we end up actually taking the left side tower down instead of the right side which was actually in fireball range right now so hopefully you guys could learn from those replays and i would say let's just search for a life match right now i will use this deck and hopefully we're able to finish off the episode with a win usually uh letter searching like searching for a match on letter takes a while so i would just edit it when we find a match okay guys looks like we're in a match and we're actually facing um Ignacito Sandstorm, but let's give him the thumbs up and let's give him the good luck. So Sandstorm is the one who like made this possible, like uh, allowing me to have this Max account. Right now I'm actually in a clan with uh, YouTube. He goes with his Ice Golem in the back. I will go with my Ice Golem into the same lane and let's see what he's using. So we do have better M. We have he actually has skeletons, so that tells me he either has Expo Cycle 2.6 or maybe the Expo um, like Ice Wizard one. So let's see what he has right now, guys. So he uh, goes with a look. I'll actually go with my Dark Prince into this, like into the. Um, Ice Golem, and let's see what he drops right now. Maybe okay. He has he has a Musketeer, which tells me that he has um, two point six Hawk Rider. I'll actually go with my Fireball over here. I might zap it, but it's not needed. I think. Yeah, there you go. Dark Prince will actually take it down. So we do need to keep our Inferno Dragon. I'll ex also go with my Bandit for his Hawk Rider, and I think this is quite a difficult matchup. I think he can defend our pushes really well because he has a cannon and he has lots of distraction units. So he already deals a lot of damage to our tower. He uh, brings it down to 2.3 HP or 2.3K. Um, so let's actually go with a Zap over here. The Bandit will uh, unfortunately die to the cannon. He does go with the Ice Spirit as well. The cannon will go down, I think. And Inferno Dragon might lock on the tower, but he actually goes with the Ice Golem to distract. So really well played on his part. So as I said, this is a really difficult matchup, guys. But of course, we will try our best to win this. So I'm, I'm not sure how we can win this but let's go with the dark prince in the back um let's go with the inferno dragon into his hawk rider and let's see if we can go maybe with a better ram in front he will probably go with his cannon of course so let's go with a better ram let's have our bandit ready to pressure as well because we do need to um yeah apply pressure in this matchup let's go with a bandit over here he will probably distract our inferno dragon so well played on his part and let's see the dark prince actually dashes onto the tower Let's go with a Zep for his Bandit, trying to take it down. There you go, Bandit and Zep will actually take down the tower. And look at that, guys. The tower goes down to 400, no, 632 uh, HP. The Bandit is still alive. Let's see if he locks. There you go, he does lock. So the tower is 632 uh, yeah, HP. And he did also lock, so he spent quite a lot of Felix over there. Let's actually go again with the Dark Prince into this lane. Let's again go with Inferno Dragon. And I think that Hawk Rider, uh, like when countering this, I think it will only get one hit. Let's see. There you go. Only one hit. He does Fireball as well. Let's go with Ice Golem. Let's go with a better M. Let's have Fireball ready for his Musketeer. I think he will, uh, like, drop it right now. Let's see. Maybe he doesn't even drop it. Let's actually zap over here. Uh, predicting, like, his skeletons. He, dro he did drop his skeletons. So that was really nice. Let's go with a Dark Prince. Let's go with a Bennett in the other lane. I'll actually ignore his uh, Hawk Rider over here, trying to just go for the tower let's go with a better m as well and i will take the hawk rider this way uh we can actually apply more pressure better m is still alive dark prince is still there and i think the better m will connect there you go inferno dragon is actually going to three count and there you guys have it three count life uh a life match on ladder that's awesome and i think we actually get a ton of trophies there you go 35 trophies so that's really a lot like he was really high so let's see where we're at in the world right now almost 6k so right now we're at our season highest 92 in the world so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode so as you guys saw like even versus um this matchup like 2.6 hawk rider we were able to win which is actually i think a, a pretty good matchup like for him because he has the cannon lots of distraction units and the musketeer gets a lot of value we can take it out of course with a fireball zap but then we have to overspend like six elixir on his four elixir unit so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode hopefully you guys uh, could learn from it let me know if you have any future episode suggestions or let me know if you would like to see more later episodes maybe with a specific deck let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this episode make sure to smack that like button if you're not subscribed to the channel yet feel free to subscribe and i hope See you in one of my next videos. Bye, guys.